So today we're going to be doing a fresh install of Arch Linux and KDE 6, so let's get started. Now I am booting with Ventoy, so I do have Arch Linux, the latest version, which is March. And that's what I'm going to be booting into. Here we are, we're just at the boot up. We're just waiting for this to happen. And I do love the fact that now Arch does have Arch Linux install script, which makes it so much easier to get this process through. So once you're booted in, the first thing you need to do is actually just jump right into Arch install. Unless you have a Wi-Fi or something, you do have to set that up. But otherwise, on a desktop, if you have network connectivity, you can just use Arch install. And here we go, Arch install. They did update this install script, so there are some stuff that are new. Like right now, if I highlight something, you see something on the info on the bottom. So they did add some new stuff to it. Now I'm leaving mirrors blank. You can change this to US if you want to or wherever location you're at. Locals, I'm leaving it as the same. This configuration is where I'm gonna use best effort and choose the PCIe device, which is my half terabyte NVMe. I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna format this to ext4. And would you like to create a separate partition for home? No, I like to keep everything all together. I'm gonna to say no for disencryption. I'm not gonna do anything with that. And as far as bootloader, since I am using UEFI, I am gonna use system boot. Otherwise you can use uh, either one of these if you're not using UEFI, but I'm gonna keep it on system boot. Unified kernel images false swap. I'm gonna keep swap because this only has like 20 gigs of RAM. Host name, you can change this. I am gonna change this to workbench because this is my workbench computer. And root password, you do wanna set this. And user account, you wanna add a user account. So for me, it's gonna be done. And the password, and then the password again. And then do you want to make this a pseudo user? Yes. And then confirm and exit. Now for profiles, we're gonna leave this blank. We're not even gonna do anything. And then in the audio, I'm gonna change to pipe wire. Additional packages. You can add a certain few things in here, which I'm just gonna add nano because we're gonna use that in a little bit and net tools just in case. And it's gonna verify that. As far as network configurations, we are gonna be using KDE. So we do want to use network manager. So we're gonna select that time zone. You can always change this whenever you want, but I'm gonna change this to Eastern if they have. Well, I'm gonna change to New York, which is fine. Uh, optional repositories. We can keep multi-lib, we don't need testing, and we can hit install. And that is it for the default configurations, but we're not done here. This is just gonna install the base of Arch Linux, and then we still have to CH root to the environment so we can install KDE Plasma. Depending on your internet speed and everything, give or take about five minutes on this, or maybe even less because it's just installing a base system, so it's pretty quick. All right, that took about like two minutes on my system. And here we go, we do need to do this. We do have to go into ch root environment just to install the rest of the stuff. So remember to hit yes for this. So now we drop into our operating system itself and we can now install the packages that we need. So first thing we need to do is pacman-s and we do need to put needed. So it's gonna install additional packages like the browser or whatever it is that comes with KDE. So we're gonna start off with um, s needed xorg and then stdm which is our login manager. And we're gonna hit all for this. And we're gonna do one because we want man DB instead. And this one we want free font is fine. We could change this if we want. And then we're gonna hit yes. Now, since it's gonna be a fresh install, at the end of this, I'm gonna show you how much space it takes because we have all the additional packages that we're gonna install. Uh, and if you're, everything that comes with KDE. So it might be a decent amount of space afterwards. Okay, now that we're done with that, I'm gonna clear the screen so it goes back to the top. And we're gonna do Pac-Man again. And this one we're gonna do needed. And we're gonna install Plasma and KDE applications. And here we go. There's gonna be a few questions here that we do have to answer. So first we're gonna hit okay on this. We're gonna hit okay on that. Those are all the additional packages that's gonna be installed. Now for here, what you wanna use is GStreamer, which I, that's what I decided to choose. You can actually use FFmpeg on this, but I think I uh, GStreamer is best suited for this right now. Um, there are two uh, available for Python, six bindings. We're gonna use pi side six. So we're gonna do one. And then here we're gonna use crony for the cron tabs. So, and then the last one we you want to use the GStreamer again, so one. And then here we have to choose our language. So we're gonna use anything that's ENG. So 
looking through this list, I think I want 30, which is um, Tesseract Data ENG. And it's going to install about 5.4 gigs total. So yes, this will actually take about like 5 to 10 minutes. So, so if you need to grab something to drink, this is the time you would go and do it. So we're going to download about 1.6 gigs of data. All right, now that that is done, now up to the next step. I'm going to clear the screen again so it's not on the bottom. And the next thing we need to do is actually nano into uh, user lib sddm sddm config dot d and then default. Now I did try to play around with this to move this to uh, etc, but it was giving me issues. So I decided to go through here, which is not the proper way to do it, but can be done through this way. Now, the only thing I need to change over here is current for theme. And we just have to change it to breeze. And that's it, save it, exit, and we are done over here. Next, what we want to do is uh, system CTL, enable uh, SDDM. So this will enable the login manager and then system CTL enable network manager. And I think that's about it. Now we could just exit and reboot and it should boot into our system with our login manager if everything went correctly. Here we go, this is the fresh boot, booting into my BIOS. Well, I don't have Plymouth, so maybe I should install that next, but that's a future thing that we could add on. And here we go, our login manager. And we could log in over here. And there we have a KDE 6. I actually really like this wallpaper that they put up. So next, 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 finish. So there we have it, a fresh install of Arch Linux and uh, KDE 6. Now you could see all these apps are pre-installed. If I go to education, I have tons of apps already. Games, I have tons of games. You don't have to install the needed portion if you don't want everything, but I prefer to have everything all installed. So if I needed a web browser like Falcon, I already have it. So if I want to go to say, youtube.com, works right away. But before we head into anything crazy, let's do system monitor. And in here, we could see we're using about Use disk space, 34 gigs of used disk space. Wow, that's actually a lot. And about 1.3 gigs of RAM on fresh boot. I'm gonna head over to my system settings, scroll down to the bottom and about the system. We are using KDE Plasma 6, QT version 6, kernel version 6.7. We're on Wayland. This is, it's amazing, everything's working. All I have to do is just install the graphic card and a few other things and I could get the system up and running. But you are on a fresh, fresh install of Arch Linux and KDE. And here we have it, NeoFetch, Arch Linux, perfect. Now again, off camera, I'm gonna be installing all the applications I use, but then again, that's how you get everything working. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.